So what about brain drugs? This is adrenaline and this is dopamine. So they're, they look very similar, but you'll notice there's that methyl group for you chemists out there. And so the methyl group is the only difference. They're both catecholamines, they're cousin, close cousins. They're both go drugs in the brain. They say go, let's move, let's run, let's act. And dopamine is actually very important in movement. In fact, when dopamine is depleted in the brain, then Parkinson's disease results. And you probably know someone, some of you may struggle with this disease, but basically when we don't have enough dopamine in the motor systems of our brain, we can't move well. And the person with Parkinson's will move very slowly. So what do we do? You'll know if you have someone, if you know someone that has Parkinson's disease, that we give them dopamine. We give them drugs that cause the dopamine to be elevated in the brain and they can actually move while they're taking the dopamine. They can move again and actually function. Well, dopamine, and so they're both brain drugs. If we buy the dopamine and go to the pharmacy, it's a drug. If our brain makes the dopamine, it's still a drug. Our brain just made it. It's a very good, efficient pharmaceutical laboratory. Well, dopamine has a second purpose. It's also very important in pleasure. So dual purpose. Just take this as a take-home message. Dopamine, very important in movement, but also very important in pleasure. And what it does is dopamine is produced right here in this area, in the midbrain, in the VTA, and in the substantia nigra. Both of these areas are dopamine producing areas. And it sends wires, both of these areas send wires to the motor areas from the substantia nigra. This is the Parkinson problem for that. And this little pathway from the VTA to this nucleus accumbens. That's another word you may want to remember. You'll hear that in the popular press. That's a key pleasure center in the brain. It's a little almond-sized area. And that nucleus accumbens is very, very important in, in pleasure. And when dopamine uh, is, uh, stimulates the nucleus accumbens, the person wants pleasure. Dopamine is probably very important in valuing and liking pleasure. Now, the nucleus accumbens has other chemicals that also stimulate it. There's the opioids are probably more important in satiating pleasure, in enjoying the pleasure, but the dopamine says, you want that pleasure, go get it. And so when it, it spikes, uh, any time a, a, a pleasurable activity is experienced, I have other slides I won't show tonight that shows in, in animal models, spikes of dopamine, food spikes dopamine, sexuality really spikes dopamine, so does cocaine, so does heroin. They all spike the dopamine in, in the brain. Chocolate spikes it pretty well. I'm sure Godiva Dark would really spike my dopamine in my brain because I love it. So what about this? This is the frontal cortex. Now the frontal cortex is right up here behind my forehead. It's the break of the brain. It says, whoa, horsey, stop. Think about it. Don't do it. If you do, you're going to be sorry. And so these areas have an interplay. Now. Dr. Eric Nessler wrote a paper in 2005 called, Is There a Common Pathway for Addiction? Dr. Nessler is one of the most respected addiction scientists on the planet. And you can say that anywhere and everyone will say yes. Anyone that knows anything about addiction will say yes. Dr. Nessler is, is very credible in this field. He was chairman at, um, <clears throat> of psychiatry and, and, uh, and neuro neuroscience. Uh, research at Southwestern in Dallas for years. He, I understand he's at Mount Cedar sinai in New York now. Um, he wrote this paper in, in 2005 called, Is There a Common Pathway for Addiction? And in this paper he said, you know, for years we've looked at cocaine, methamphetamine, and we found that, yeah, they're real addictions. They spike the dopamine pathways. But now it appears that natural rewards, in other words, natural consumption of rewards that we that we uh, experience to help us survive, like food and sexuality, can also be hijacked in the same way that drugs hijack the pleasure center. So is there a common pathway? Do all roads lead to the mesolimbic dopaminergic systems? He wrote in his, in his paper, in this paper published in Nature Neuroscience. And so this, actually, this diagram is from that paper. So what's interesting about it, this is a dopamine cell, normal, on the top, Look on the bottom, it's shrunken. And lo and behold, he said, 
you know, we know that with drugs, what happens is because of a downgrading, the cells actually shrink. They get smaller. What happens is the brain, in acting out an addiction, um, well, let, let's say we experience a pleasure and we get a dopamine spike. The brain says, thank you, that's a good pleasure, I want that. But when the person starts to become fixated in addiction and it's not the, a garnish to life anymore, dopamine reward becomes the main event, the main course, then things start to change in the brain. And what happens, those cells actually shrink. They get smaller and they produce less dopamine because the brain says, you know what, the dopamine and the pleasure are great, but you're killing me. It's too much. I have other things I need to do. So almost as a defense mechanism of sorts, it downgrades and shrinks that dopamine cell. It gets smaller. So now, look what happens. You can see what happens now. Does the person have the same amount of dopamine in their new resting state? No. So what do they feel like now normally, just walking around? Not as good. Does a normal meal do it anymore? Does, or whatever it is they've conditioned themselves to, does normal sexuality within marriage, does that suffice anymore? No, what happens now is to gain that same spike because of shrinking circuits, so to speak, the person must boost the dopamine. And to just feel pleasurable or normal because they have fewer receptors as well on the dopamine receiving cells in the nucleus accumbens, they must boost the dopamine, the amount of the dopamine, the bigger hit. They must hit the brain harder with a stimulus to produce the same effect. So for pornography addiction, it's soft core to hard core to child pornography. And it basically causes to just feel pleasant, the person must act out and de increase that signal magnitude of dopamine. It resets the pleasure thermostat, the hedonistic hot, uh, uh, thermostat of the brain. And another thing happens, then that frontal area, that control area, that break of the brain up here behind the forehead that says, think about it, shrinks as well. It gets smaller. So not only physically, but functionally. So in a normal person, it's don't do it. Yeah, you really want this. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Don't do it. It's a no-go. And of course, in addiction, it's you really want this. Remember how good the last time was? You really want it. You don't want it. Yes, you do. No, you don't. It's a